what is happening there? Because Mike Del Tufo is a shareholder of the Green Bay Packers. He's yes. an owner, Tom, and he would love you to give him a, a fill-in as to what the heck is happening there. Not as much as uh, certain people were probably expecting to happen today. In fact, I just got out of uh, Packers president and CEO Mark Murphy's press conference in which he, he mentioned he thought, I thought there would be a lot more booing, whether it was against us or against Aaron Rodgers. Uh, it was pretty tame, honestly. There were about 4,000 uh, Packers shareholders at the meeting. It was in the Lambeau Field Bowl. It was 90-plus degrees. Everybody's out there baking in the heat. But you know, outside of a few guys, you know, yelling little things of where's Aaron and, you know, uh, Murphy was complimenting the general manager, Brian Gutekunst, and some guy yelled, like, I've never seen him throw a pass. Other than that, it was like nobody, you know, people didn't pile on. It wasn't a, you know, a mob scene in there. You know, it was, like I said, pretty a pretty tame atmosphere. You know, we got a few answers from Mark Murphy. He wouldn't dive into, you know, Aaron Rodgers coming back. He said that he does not know if he's going to report uh, tomorrow, uh, be here for practice on Wednesday. I also asked him, do you know or do you have a commitment he'll be here week one? Murphy said he wouldn't get into that either. Uh, he did say that, yeah, they've gotten phone calls, but they've been you know, very clear that they're not trading Aaron Rodgers. And I said, Mark, so just to be clear, there's no scenario in your head down the line where you would consider trading Rodgers. And he said, no, absolutely not. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's been very consistent both publicly and privately throughout this entire uh, offseason and this entire ordeal. It's really been a matter of, how does Aaron Rodgers come back to the Packers, or is he willing to execute his one um, biggest piece of leverage, which is not showing up at all? You know, there's still different levers that Rodgers can pull. Uh, he could choose to show up, of course, on his current contract. He could continue to push for a revised contract that, as we've talked about for months now, would give him more power and control over uh, how his career in Green Bay ends. He could, of course, you know, announce that he's retiring and eventually unretire and go down that road. He could show up five days into training camp, eat five days of fifty thousand dollars fines, and you know, preserve his uh, the bonus money that they could go after. So there's a lot of different scenarios. Um, you know, certainly there is some level of optimism, and to hear Mark Murphy and Brian Goodick couldn't say it today. I mean, they talked about it in the shareholders meeting as if. This is just what's going to happen. Looking forward to coming back. Strong offensive nucleus led by Aaron Rodgers, and we're going to go try to finish the job after going to two straight NFC championship games. You know, that's their external messaging, but as we know, Rodgers, for as little as he has said publicly, has done an awfully good job for months now of making clear uh, how exactly he's feeling about the Packers organization. He's Tom Pilicero, the reporter for NFL Network and NFL.com. I'm Susie Schuster, in for Rich Eisen. Tom, do you think anybody outside of David Dunn, his agent, and Aaron Rodgers, maybe Shailene Woodley, do you think anybody knows what's going to happen? That's a great point, Susie. And I, I've talked about this on a little bit on TV. Is Aaron is known, even to people that he's close with, is just a very calculated individual. You know, everybody says, like, you know, we know he has a plan, but he hasn't told us what the plan is. And so... You know, from his coaches on down, everybody's kind of been wondering exactly how this is going to play out. And the Packers have, you know, flown people out there to meet with him and talk about the future and, and everything else. But, you know, it's not – I think that the one of the mistakes we make in a situation like this is looking at the binary construct of either he shows up or he doesn't. Either he comes back to the Packers and everything is great, or he doesn't come back and it's, a, you know, it's a disaster. Like, there's a lot of shades of gray you can go through here. The question really – you know, I, I think primarily has been, is this sustainable? In other words, regardless of what happens in 2021, where is this relationship headed? Is there any way that the Packers can salvage it in terms of long term? Or is this, as uh, Rogers alluded to with his, uh, his post along with Devontae Adams on Instagram over the weekend, is this his last dance? Mm-hmm. Is this his one year bleep you tour? I'm going to go out and win and play great and we're going to win the Super Bowl and then I'm out of here. Um, you know, that's kind of always been the most logical way that this entire thing plays out, just because the Packers, if they want to, and they certainly have to this point, can say, listen, we, we hear what you're saying. We want to fix it. We want to fix this year, our quarterback for the long term. And if you're not happy with the fixes, well, we still have you under contract for three years. So, no, we're not going to trade you. We expect you to be a part of this team. And what Rodgers wants is the security. It's not the financial security. The guy's made a ton of money. It is that security that he will not have to wake up one day and find out his career 
uh, with the Packers is over or find himself in a similar spot to Brett Favre uh, when I was covering that back, whatever that was, 13 years ago now, where Favre felt pressured to make a decision about his future. And, you know, shortly after the NFC Championship game, after the 2007 season, he came out and said, I'm retired. In less than a month, he was having second thoughts. Not that Rodgers would go that dire- that direction, but you know, when Favre came back and said, you know what, guys, I do want to play, the Packers said, yeah, that's, that's not going to happen. But Rodgers wants to have something that very few athletes and specifically NFL players have, which is the ability to call his own shot on how things come to an end with his longtime team. And why wouldn't he want the exact same thing that Tom Brady has? I mean, let's face it, he's also a once-in-a-lifetime kind of player. He's smart. He's calculated. He's seeing Tom Brady go ahead and rebuild a team in his own image, and why wouldn't he want the same thing? Well, and that's where the Patriots landed, too, which was they were doing something to Tom Brady's contract at the end, which was moving money up, uh, adding incentives, allowing him to you know make his money now, but also... Uh, set up the contract in such a way that, regardless, Tom Brady was going to hit the free agent market. Even if he had agreed with the Patriots, they could not redo his deal until after free agency opened. So, yeah, you know, the difference there was Tom Brady for a long time was not making top-of-the-market uh, type of money and essentially played out his deal. With Rodgers, if you're talking about, and I know that um, you know a couple of my colleagues tweeted about this earlier, if you're talking about going to it's a one-year deal and the rest of it voids, I mean, I mentioned that scenario to another general manager who's been interested in that this morning. He goes, why in the world would the Packers do that? And I said, I don't think this is not their idea. This could be a potential solution from Rodgers' side. It's just, it's very delicate. And again, you know that Rodgers has had a plan through this entire offseason. He's told other players, I'm going to be out of there. You know, but at some point, there are realities you have to deal with in terms of the contract, in terms of the Packers' leverage in this situation. Uh, you know, Mark Murphy didn't really dive deep into it, but he did reference when he was asked about what happens if Aaron's not here. He said, well, there's a whole CBA process. And that entails, again, barring a retirement, it's $50,000 mandatory fines starting on day six of training camp. If Rodgers is still not here, they can begin going after signing bonus money, which all adds up to if he skips out on all the training camp at the end of the season, it's like $30 million. You're talking about pretty significant financial penalties, even for a guy who's got plenty of money to throw around. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.